On June 21, India marked the 11th International Yoga Day under the theme, Yoga for One Earth, One Health, highlighting the link between personal wellness and global sustainability. Prime Minister Narendra Modi led the national celebration from Visakhapatnam, where over 3 lakh people joined him in the Common Yoga Protocol. Part of the nationwide Yoga Sangam initiative, synchronized yoga sessions were held at over 1 lakh locations, involving over two core participants. Andhra Pradesh aimed for a Guinness World Record and distributed over 50 lakh certificates, while 25,000 tribal children performed 108 Surya Namaskars in 108 minutes. Celebrations were also held across Delhi and globally at Indian embassies, including a major event at the UN headquarters in New York. Ten signature events launched by the Ministry of Ayush aim to engage diverse sections of society. In a strategic push to enhance India's aerial strike capabilities, Russia has proposed integrating its KH-69 stealth cruise missile with the Indian Air Force's Su-30 MKI fleet. This offer, aiming to reinforce India-Russia defense ties, addresses the IF's need for lighter, long-range standoff weapons. Unlike the heavier Brahmos A, the KH-69, originally developed for Russia's Su-57, offers a stealthier and more compact alternative, enabling the Su-30 MKI to carry multiple missiles per sortie. With proven combat use and low radar signature, the missile strengthens India's options for deep penetration strikes. The move complements existing systems like the Scalp missile on Rafales and marks a significant step in building a multi-layered strike capability. The integration is expected to be cost-effective, requiring minimal changes to the Su-30 MKI's structure. On June 19, 2025, the steel-cutting ceremony for the fourth of five fleet support ships was held at Hindustan Shipyard Limited in Visakhapatnam, with Navy Chief Admiral Dinesh K. Tripathi attending as the chief guest. Senior naval officials, including Vice Admirals Rajesh Pendarkar and Rajaram Swaminathan, also participated. The FSS contract, signed in August 2023, aims for deliveries beginning mid-2027. These 40,000-ton vessels will extend the Navy's blue water capabilities by replenishing fuel, ammunition, and supplies at sea, supporting longer deployments. Designed indigenously and aligned with the Atmanirbhar Bharat and Make in India initiatives, the ships will also support disaster relief and evacuation missions, contributing to both military logistics and humanitarian efforts. India is set to begin large-scale production of the Astra Mk2, a next-generation beyond visual-range air-to-air missile developed by DRDO, with induction expected by 2026. The Ministry of Defense is finalizing plans for dual production lines, one through Bharat Dynamics Limited and the other via private firms such as Tata Advanced Systems and LNT, to meet the Indian Air Force's demand for over 500 units, with a 160 km range, dual pulse motor, ASA seeker, and Mach 4.5 speed, the missile significantly outperforms its predecessor and rivals global systems like the Amram and Meteor. It will be integrated across key IF platforms including the Su-30 MKI, Rafale and Tejas MK-1A. This move is part of the Atmanirbhar Bharat initiative, aiming to reduce dependence on imports while countering regional threats like China's PL-15 and Pakistan's HM-120C. Challenges remain in scaling production and ensuring integration but the project marks a major stride in India's defense self-reliance. In a major boost to India's commercial space sector, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, HAL, has secured the contract to build ISRO's small satellite launch vehicle through a Rs 511 crore bid, beating two rival consortia, one led by Adani-backed Alpha Design Technologies, and another by Bharat Dynamics Limited, HAL emerged as the sole winner for the full technology transfer. The agreement, to be signed with ISRO, NSpace and NSIL, enables HAL to build, own and market SSLV launches, independently after a two-year handholding phase. ISRO will assist in developing two prototype rockets, after which HAL is expected to produce 6 to 10 SSLVs annually. This move is part of a broader strategy to shift routine satellite launches to industry, while ISRO focuses on advanced research. HAL becomes the third Indian company, after startup Skyroot and Agnical, to build rockets, 
marking a transformative step in India's space manufacturing ecosystem and self-reliance goals. In a strategic move to boost India's defense manufacturing capabilities, Axis Gates, through its subsidiary Axis Gates Aerospace and Technologies, signed an agreement with European missile giant MBDA to establish a defense facility in Karnataka. Announced during the Paris Air Show 2025, the upcoming unit will be located at Aerospace Park near Kempa Gowda International Airport, Bengaluru. The facility will feature test bench labs, missile launcher infrastructure, and specialized equipment to support MBDA's advanced systems engineering needs. Axis Gates aims to leverage this partnership to expand into areas like manufacturing, MRO, and next-gen defense tech, including unmanned warfare, aligning with its FY26 growth vision. The collaboration marks a key step in strengthening India's defense ecosystem, while fostering high-end technological and industrial development. In a key development, supporting India's self-reliance goals, French aerospace firm Dassault Aviation has agreed to assist the Indian Air Force in integrating indigenous weapons onto Rafale fighter jets. While confirming no restrictions on the type or number of Indian weapons, Dassault clarified it cannot provide access to the aircraft's critical source codes, particularly those linked to the ASA radar developed by Thales, due to proprietary rights. This limits India's ability to independently upgrade or modify systems. The Rafale's open architecture will still enable integration of future DRDO weapons, like the Astra Mk2 missile. The stance highlights the ongoing struggle between self-reliance and foreign technology dependence. This issue could influence negotiations for future Rafale acquisitions, including 26 Rafale marine jets finalized for the Indian Navy in April 2025. Indian defense planners are expected to explore alternative strategies, including deeper domestic R&D or direct engagement with original technology developers. Hindustan Aeronautics Limited has confirmed that the structural assembly of the first Tejas MK2 prototype is progressing on schedule, with the aircraft's rollout planned for 2026. The announcement was made by HAL Chairman Dr. D.K. Sunil during the Paris Air Show, highlighting a key milestone in India's drive for indigenous defense manufacturing. The Tejas MK2, developed by the Aeronautical Development Agency, ADA, with HAL as the manufacturing partner, is a significantly upgraded successor to the Tejas MK1 and MK1A light combat aircraft. Equipped with the powerful GEF-414 engine, it will carry a larger payload of up to 6,500 kilograms and feature a longer airframe, canard-based aerodynamics, and advanced indigenous avionics, including the UTOM ASA radar and a modern electronic warfare suite. The aircraft is intended to replace the Indian Air Force's aging Jaguar, Mirage 2000, and MiG-29 fleets, enhancing India's air combat capability. Approved by the Cabinet Committee on Security, the program is central to India's defense modernization and self-reliance goals. The smooth progress reflects strong collaboration within India's aerospace ecosystem and underscores the nation's commitment to building a robust, future-ready air force with homegrown technologies. A key condition has emerged in India-Russia defense talks, with India insisting on integrating its indigenous radar and sensor systems into any potential deal for Russia's Su-57E fifth-generation fighter jet. The demand centered around replacing the Russian Gallium Arsenide-based N-036 Bielka ASA radar with DRDO-developed Gallium Nitride-based radars, like the UTAM and Virupaksh reflects India's growing emphasis on technological sovereignty under the Atmanirbhar Bharat Initiative. Indian officials argue that gallium nitride-based radars offer superior power efficiency, range, and jamming resistance, making them more suitable for future-ready platforms. This condition challenges Russia's design framework and has raised concerns in Moscow, despite Russia offering joint production, tech transfer, and payment in Indian rupees. The Su-57E is competing in India's $20 billion multi-role fighter aircraft tender, 
alongside rivals like the Rafale and F-35. India's position signals a strategic shift towards standardizing indigenous systems across current and future aircraft, including the Tejas MK-2 and AMCA. Analysts see this as a test of whether traditional defense partnerships can evolve in the face of India's rising confidence as a developer of cutting-edge military technology, potentially reshaping the trajectory of India-Russia defense cooperation. India's indigenous fighter jet engine program is poised for a major leap as the Ministry of Defense is expected to approve fresh funding for the Kaveri Engine Initiative. Led by DRDO's Gas Turbine Research Establishment, GTRE, the program will now enter a critical phase, with BrahMos Aerospace, tasked to develop a new afterburner, aiming to elevate the thrust from the current 51 kN in the dry variant, to nearly 80 kN. This would make the Kaveri derivative engine suitable for manned aircraft like the Tejas fighter jet. The afterburner will be tested on a limited series production, Tejas to evaluate its performance in real-world flight conditions. The engine's dry version, initially designed for the Stealth Guttuck UCAV, has shown stable thrust output in tests. However, reducing its current weight of 1,180 kg to compete with the GEF-404 remains a key challenge. This collaboration involving DRDO, BrahMos, and private players like Godridge Aerospace, reflects India's push under the Atmanirbhar Bharat initiative to reduce foreign dependence. If successful, the trials could pave the way for future upgrades to Tejas MK-1A and support the development of Kaveri 2.0, intended to power India's next-generation AMCA fighter. That's all from YKS team for now. Hope you liked today's video. Please subscribe our channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching.